All right, I'm back, probably for the finale of this edition. Um, anyway, I urge you, please help me out here. Invite your friends, uh, share my, if you enjoy this, please share this with friends, especially artistic friends, but anybody that you might enjoy it. Um, this is obviously a business, uh, what's the word, uh, experiment on my part. Um, so far, I'm enjoying it immensely. I'm enjoying it just as much as I thought that I might. Um, I have a lot of fun. I hope you can tell that. And uh, the feedback has been generally good. I just need more more of it, more people um, giving me feedback and uh, responding. So if you're enjoying these uh, live art adventures, please pass it on to others. Um, so, let me do some interesting things. Let me do some risky things. I'm pretty much done with the photograph. Now, I've got the house rendered sufficiently, adequately. Um, and, and as you can see, I want darker fading to lighter. And I've got that already happening very much. Let me turn this sideways. I'm going to do some really big brush stuff right now. I want to drag up some of that purple but control it with a tissue not like it let let it get too crazy so there's no pigment on my brush at all it's just plain water and i'm using the um the watercolor pencil that's already on the paper dragging up re-enlivening the red and the purple in particular basically darkening the whole house except for this part right here in the middle which I want to stand out as the star show. Now you might say, well what if you didn't want purple? Well I needed to, then I would have had to instead of doing yellow, red, yellow, orange, red purple, I would have done yellow, orange, red, blue, or yellow, purple, blue, uh, and then I would have been pulling up a much more blue color, uh, and it could be a, a, a warm blue, like a phthalo, or a cool blue, like ultramarine, either one would have worked, but of course today, that's all well, I, that, that choice has already been made for me by the colors that I chose to do with the watercolor pencil. Um, one of the things I feel needs to happen is the light side of this chimney is too dark and it's got some pencil lines in it right here, watercolor pencil lines that I don't care for. So I'm going to just see what it, <coughs> virtually erase them. There's still a tiny ghost of those lines there, very tiny. Now, nobody would notice, even be able to tell that they were there if they didn't know ahead of time. And then I want to add some color to that. So some yellow ochre. There we go. Uh, a little bit dark. So lighten it up. Lighten it. There. Now, um, there's just a few more things I want to do. It's probably enough. You've probably watched enough. Uh, we'll see. Um, no, I'll probably bring you in later, but the, there's some things that I think I want to do now without that would be a little bit tedious. Well, I'll show you what they are. So I've got this nice flat brush. Down here in strategic places, I want to um, make the, the, the light better again. I want to lift out some areas just to give little accents, a little bit more energy down here. And by the way, again, I call this a watercolor sketch. It is, and I think for obvious reasons, it is, it's not the, the hyper finished uh, detailed watercolor. And it's got lines in it. Now that's the main thing. It's got these watercolor pencil lines. You, you'll see the finished, I'll post the finished drawing when I'm all done. Um, I am going to come in here with some opaque gouache. Uh, or, or something, probably something like this. It's 
white uh, watercolor and and really make some highlights in here. I want to do some highlights on the branches. I might do it with scratching. I'll, I'll start out with scratching, see if that does the job, and if it doesn't, then I'll I'll progress to uh, white opaque paint. Um, but I, so I want a little bit more sparkle of light in the house here. But generally speaking, I'm pretty happy. Let, here's one thing I'm wondering about. I'm wondering if I took land it, boy. I'm gonna live dangerously with you just for a minute, okay? Here's what I want to do. I'm thinking of warming up um, that white. It's, it's right now it's pure paper. I hope I don't live to regret this. Want some clean water, so that's why I had these more than one water container in front of me when I really want some something clean. I'm going to do a small area. I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre. Very very pale. No, hang on, I'm going to use a bigger brush, one inch brush. Make sure it's clean, get all the old contaminants out of it. And pick up yellow ochre. Yeah, I'm going to do it right here. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's okay. Nobody died. And I'm liking that. You probably can't even see that, I'm sorry, you will see it in the the final image that I post. Um, just warming it up a tiny bit is actually bringing it forward, bringing life to that that whiteness. I'm getting a little more reckless now, aren't I? Now that I think, no, it's going to work. That's exactly correct. Because this also, of course, re-enlivens the watercolor pencil, right? I'm controlling it a great deal with tissue so it doesn't get away from me no of course there's when i come in here with a pink uh pink, do i want it to be you know pale yellow orange opaque or do i want it to be white and I do not know the answer to that question. We will cross that bridge when we come to it. But there, I just introduced a little bit more color to the whole painting and I actually do like it. I like it so much I'm going to do a little bit more up in the roof, on the roof. Whoa! <laughs> I had a little glob of uh, orange paint on that brush. Did not mean to make those lines, th those marks, but they look okay, so I'm going to leave them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whew! I'm, I'm liking the warmth of sun hitting the roof in particular. That's way too dark, but I'm going to push it back. There we go. Yeah. Fun, huh? So you're always always welcome to experiment when you're painting it's a bit of a risk but I'm happy I took it because I'm happy with the the results and right now I just saw something else I want to do so as often the case one thing leads to another I'm quite confident of this however and that is that I want to bring in some Thalo blue, warm greenish blue, Thalo blue into my shadows on the house. Okay, the, the shadows are all very purple right now and that's fine, but I think it's going to be prettier. That's pretty bold. Yep, but I like it. That is nice. I'm not sure why the introduction of that yellow uh, prompted me to do this. But I'm glad that it did. All of a sudden I saw when I did that yellow, it's like, you know what? Those shadows could really be bluer. And it would be really pretty. Pretty. That's a word you'd never hear in the art department. <laughs> and it, it is a dangerous word. And I don't want it visually arresting, visually rich. I don't want it sentimentally pretty. 
if I can use it, so I, I am cautious about it. The word pretty can make a, can sort of insinuate sort of a Hallmark card kind of prettiness, if you know what I mean. Nothing against Hallmark cards, but you know what I mean. It's a sentimental, pretty, pretty. And that's not what I want. What I want is visually, it doesn't matter what it's a picture of at all. I want it visually arresting, visually fascinating. So sometimes I use the word pretty as a shorthand for that, but it's a dangerous word. But gone, that's pretty. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I try to be the sophisticated art professor, and uh, I just can't pull it off full time. <laughs> uh, you've maybe heard me rant and rave or wax eloquent, whichever you want to call it, about the issue of beauty in art and why we lost beauty in the uh, late 19th and early 20th century. We absolutely did. We declared war on beauty in that period. It's a very good question why. I spent some time yesterday, I think I, think I was being recorded, talking about the historical forces that caused that development to take place. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad I did that. This is this is getting much better than it was just a few minutes ago. Very nice. And again, you understand when an artist says very nice, they're not bragging. <laughs> they're they're relieved. They're celebrating. They're, they're I'm surprised as you are. Does that does that make sense? So I hope you if you're an artist, you understand that completely. If you're not an artist, you think, man, this guy's so arrogant. No, I, I probably am arrogant, maybe. I try not to let it show too much, but but by saying that's nice, that is not arrogance. That's not a manifestation of my arrogance. My arrogance shows up in much more obtuse ways. <laughs> like when I say, I am the best. <laughs> that's arrogant. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, happy, sweet, fun. that's happy, that's me, man. and I'm like it when I be happy. Um, it's really inviting some, um, some um, light highlights now. And uh, I'm going to turn you off, and I'll save the highlights for part four, I think, right? I smell some really good supper cooking downstairs. You're lucky this is not smell-o-vision, because you'd be smelling... What I'm smelling, and I don't know what's cooking down there, but it sure smells good. And I'm afraid I'm going to get called to supper any minute. And uh, so let me take a break here again. I'm liking it. I might do a little bit of work off camera and then bring you in for the final, final finale. Not just the finale, the final finale. <laughs> I'll answer your comments later when I take a break.